Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. For the past eight years, we've been running or hosting an online workshop where we walk folks through the process of building a piece of furniture. We start with the design process, lumber selection, of course the construction, right through to the finish. Eight years ago, the first project we did was this little candle box. It was done entirely with hand tools. We did half blind dovetails all the way around, sliding lid, a little bit of shape on the lid. It was a fun project. And we've moved from there to several more complicated ones. I wanna show you the one we're doing right now. This is a standing desk. So the way we do it is we use inexpensive materials, construction grade plywood, some number three pine, and we build it, just screwing it together so that we can get the exact dimensions that we want. We want the right height, we want the right width, went through that whole process. So I'll show you some of the features on this. The, uh, the legs are all going to be, or the stretches are all going to be a through wedge tenon. So a through wedge tenon is where this piece goes through what we call a mortise, but the mortise is shaped like a V. So when you put this piece through, the tenon portion of it, when it comes through, it then has two wedges driven in, two slots that you cut prior to, and when those wedges go in, they cause the two outside pieces of the tenon to spread out like that, and you create an internal dovetail. So that's what will hold this stretcher to this leg. This one has to have two small through wedge tenons. I'll actually show you on the other side because in the process of doing it, we wanted to know, well, what was gonna be the right size. So we just go in and we drew the proportion. So we just said we settled on a half inch. Over here on this side, you'll see we'd started off with a 3 eighths, but the 3 eighths just didn't seem to be big enough. So we went to the half inch. And then again, we wanna make sure, because these wedges are going to be a darker wood, you want to make sure that those proportions are right. This stretcher, when it comes through on this one, you can't run a through wedge tenon across the grain. It has to be parallel to it. So it'll have two little ones, and we drew those in as well. Back stretcher, we played around with the height of that to see where it was going to be just right. This was typically what you would find in a lumber yard. So the merchant would be sitting behind here, conducting his business. The customer would be out there. Well, I don't want somebody resting their foot on that stretcher but I also want, I need it for stability. So we made it high enough so that that wouldn't occur. And then this one, we hopefully have it in far enough that that won't get stepped on as well. Now the top is gonna to be your desk. We played around with the, uh, the top part section where you're gonna keep envelopes and papers and whatever. And we found that it was most convenient to actually have it sitting like this. And then you, this uh, the lid or desk portion is slanted so that it rests nicely or your elbows forearms rest nicely on it and of course I did this to my height and then we have notes all over there and what we're going to make it out of this is actually going to be half inch medium density fiberboard that will then be banded meaning we'll glue solid wood all the way around the perimeter and then we will veneer it on both sides that means it'll be nice and stable and you lift it up and inside here you'll have lots of room to keep paperwork and then there'll be three little drawers now what we did on the drawers is just using eighth inch uh, plywood, we, we cut them and then played around with what the look would be like. And when we finally got it, we nailed it. We just tacked them on with a, uh, a little nail gun. Now the hinge here, instead of the traditional brass hinge, we're, we decided to use my, my wood hinge. So we played around with it. I wanted to make sure it was going to work right. We got the angle and then there's how your hinge will operate. That'll come up like that. On the inside, you see it like this. And when it closes, Everything's nice and smooth. What else do we have? This will be dovetailed. So we put in where the pins would be, where the tails would be. So this top section would be dovetailed front and back. On these stretchers, we're going to have two tenons. And the reason we use two tenons, instead of having one big long mortise, which really weakens this piece, because you'd have a big long slot cut on here and over on here. By using two shorter tenons, it allows you to have some material left in here so that that'll strengthen the top section of this leg. And then we will pin it from the inside just for a little extra strength. So that'll be on all, uh, all ends of those stretchers. We also thought it would be nice to have a little, a little tiny drawer right here where you would keep pencils. So that's what this is. And there'll be a little finger recess underneath that you'll be able to just reach in and pull that out. Otherwise, it'll blend in nicely. The lid, that too will be MDF banded with veneer all on top and bottom so that there's no issues with movement. If this was a solid piece of wood, it's going to expand and contract and that just complicates things further. We'll also have that same little drawer over here on this side. 
What are you pointing at, Jake? Oh yeah, and then we have two big drawers here. So these, these uh, I mean, I love making drawers, so that's probably the reason why there's so many. So there, we, we cut this out of a piece of plywood just to kind of get the proportions. And then we decided to go in and, or in the process of determining how we were going to build this, we went in and we made a mock-up. And I wanted to kind of reduce the complications a little bit. So this drawer box will be two pieces. If This is solid wood, so this has to be solid wood. Because the grain's running the same direction, these will expand equally. So you've got a solid piece here, solid piece here. Plywood, top and bottom. Don't have to worry about the expansion of plywood in either direction. It makes for a good solid box. So it's kind of like a torsion box somewhat. But the nice thing is, because this is going to move seasonally up and down, which not norm, it's not normal for drawers, um, the box or the drawer itself will be able to be made with even tighter tolerances because you won't have to allow for that seasonal movement because the drawers are going to move at the same rate that the box is going to grow or shrink. There'll be one over there as and well. The drawer fronts are made over the same material. Oh yeah, so let me show you what we did with the drawer fronts. We're actually, we've already started doing some of these pieces. This is the, uh, the end pieces. So we took, uh, by the way, it's gonna be made out of cherry. So we took a solid piece, we ripped a, st a section off, and then cut this piece out, which will be the drawer front, moved these in to compensate for the saw kerf, so that'll fit in there perfectly, and that'll actually be the drawer front. Now that'll be cut down, but the front of it should blend in nicely and you won't see any, any disruption to the grain at all. And the bottom one, or the, the front ones, we did a little bit differently. Got to keep these in order. So that again started off as a solid piece of wood. We ripped it, took that center section out, and cut the uh, piece out of the middle, cut the two ends. There's the drawer fronts, and then we, of course we moved everything back so that we again compensate for the saw kerf and then glued it all back together. So when that sits on there and those drawer fronts are on there, you should have them blend in nicely. Now, finally, we're just in the process now of chopping the uh, through wedge tenons. So there's your leg, and we went through and we played around with the leg treatment. What we're having here is a little chamfer that will just stop right there. There's much smaller, smaller chamfer here. You never want to leave any sharp edges. just too susceptible to damage and they don't feel very nice. So the top mortises we did with the hollow chisel mortiser. They're not going to be seen. They're nice and quick. The bottom through wedge tenons have to be done by hand. So these are chopped out with a half inch uh, mortise chisel. So it's a narrower opening here, a wider opening here. And that'll all be filled in when you put the tenon in and drive in the wedges. If you're interested in this, and by the way, all of those projects that we've built are all stored on the site. There's well over 2,000 episodes. We now actually do a, uh, three 45-minute sessions each week. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we post one. We used to do a hand tool only section. We discontinued that about a year ago. Just couldn't maintain that uh, filming schedule. We were filming five days a week, 52 weeks a year. But when you're a member, you get access to all of that previously shot content. If you're interested, go to robsworkshop.com or you can also find it on robcosman.com. Finally, check out our Purple Heart Project. This is where we bring combat wounded veterans into our workshop four times a year. We bring seven each time as our guests and we treat them to a week of intense hand tool woodworking. Very therapeutic. If you know anyone that is combat wounded, have them go to robcosman.com. Up in the top, Purple Heart Project, will give them all the details on how they can find out and apply. If they're chosen, we cover all their expenses, airfare, hotel, meals, and each vet gets to go home with about approximately $2,000 worth of tools so they can continue this at home. Appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.